together and to express to God um, our response to the stuff that God has done um, in our lives and the lives of those around us. That is, that is the heart of worship, is to express to God um, uh, what, what our response is uh, to who he is and how he has, uh, has worked in our lives. And so um, as we prepare to do that, I'm going to pray, and then Ryan's going to introduce our uh, musical uh, uh, worship leader this morning, and then we will continue with our time of worship together. So if you'll bow with me. Father, we love you. We want to make sure that you hear that loud and clear this morning, that we love you. And we want you to know that, uh, that we are, are excited to be a part of what you're doing in this place at this time. God, I ask that you will help us to, um, uh, to be able to, to focus our attention, focus our spirits, focus our mind, focus our hearts on, uh, on listening to you tell us who you are. And uh, through that, to hear who we are. And then for us to get a chance to respond back and to tell you um, that we love you and that we recognize who you are and your majesty and your power and your greatness and, and your goodness. And uh, give us the opportunity to convey that to you clearly today. We love you very much again. And we pray all of this in your name and in the name of your son Jesus who is alive right now today. Amen. Hello. If you are a uh, sophomore or junior or senior here at Great Lakes, uh, you have probably seen this face before. Eric Cray, he's a familiar face up on this stage. We are happy to have him be somebody who is uh, always ready to come back to Great Lakes and, and bless us, uh, encourage us through his spoken and sung uh, words of encouragement from the Lord. Uh, Eric is a 2012 graduate of Great Lakes. Uh, with a double major in music and Bible theology, and he is uh, the associate pastor at Central Free Methodist Church, which is just 10 minutes down the road from here on Saginaw Highway. And uh, we also have with us today Joel Kleppel. I think if you're also a sophomore, junior, or senior here, you probably recognize his face too, maybe if you're a freshman as well. Um, but let's, uh, let's thank these guys for coming. Um, welcome them today. Hey everyone, it's great to be here this morning. Um, this chapel looks awesome, by the way. It did not look this good when I was here. Okay. <laughs> so you all get a major blessing in that. Uh, this first song that we're going to sing is I Thank God. So if you know it, sing out. And if you don't, it's simple and you'll learn it. Uh, my introduction to this song was actually last year. We had a space in our church that we're remodeling and we're using it for college age ministry and young adult ministry. And uh, we had a group come up from Detroit who sang this song in this worship space, walking around writing prayers out on the floor before we finished the floor. And uh, it challenged my heart, and it encouraged me, and I hope that it does the same with you this morning. You're welcome to stand uh, to worship with us. We're not here for us. We're here for God, and we just want to lift God up in this time and start it off by praising his name. So would you join with us?
to rub on that to go to a conference a few weeks ago and it was down in Florida and one of the songs that they sang I learned that you guys know I know it is everlasting God um, uh, so the chorus of the song uh, the what I call the chorus and I will remain confident in this I will see the goodness of the Lord if you guys remember that at all um, but based <laughs> on Psalm 27 so Psalm 27 I personally love a lot of the Psalms in our church we're going through um, uh, series where we're just picking psalms and talking about how it reflects our lives. And in this psalm, I see close to lament, not quite lament, but the idea that we approach God with all of who we are. And that God already knows the inspiration of our hearts, already knows our thoughts, and we're not hiding anything from him when we refuse to be honest with him with the emotions and, and the life circumstances that we are experiencing. Okay, being let by those emotions and life circumstances is, di is a different thing. That's not great. But being honest with our Father, with our, with our Yahweh, that's real. And I love in the Psalms how they don't hide from it. So I'm going to read this Psalm, and then I have another little bit of instruction before we sing this next song. But bear with me. Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and salvation. 
So why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger. So why should I tremble? When evil people came to de come to devour me, when my enemies and foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. Even if I am attacked, I will remain confident. The one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek most, is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple. <coughs> For he will conceal me there when troubles come. He will hide me in his sanctuary. He will place me out of reach on a high rock. Then I will hold my head high above my enemies who surround me. At his sanctuary, I will offer sacrifices with shouts of joy, singing and praising the Lord with music. Short page two. Hear me as I pray, O Lord. Be merciful and answer me. My heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. Do not turn your back on me. Do not reject your servant in anger. You have always been my helper. Don't leave me now. Don't abandon me, O God of my salvation. Even if my father and mother abandon me, the Lord will hold me close. Teach me how to live, O Lord. Lead me along the right path, for my enemies are waiting for me. Do not let me fall into their hands, for they accuse me of things I've never done. With every breath, they threaten me with violence, yet I am confident I will see the Lord's goodness while I am here in the land of the living. Yet I am confident I will see the Lord's goodness while I am here in the land of the living. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. One of the blessings that I get at being at the church I'm at is uh, we get to minister to a lot of people from a lot of different cultures. Some who were born in the United States and some who weren't and some who English is their first and primary language and some who English is not their first or primary language. And so this morning, we're going to sing this song, but at the end of it, I wanted to add a bit of what we would call central, that's my church, but central worship. We're going to sing in Swahili, everyone, okay? And at the end of this, we're going to sing Hata Mi Lele, Hata Mi Lele, Yesu Mi Buana, which means, roughly translated, forever Jesus is my king. Forever Jesus is my Lord. And we're going to throw some hallelujahs and amens in there. Okay, but forever Jesus is my Lord. Let's approach God with all of who we are and be led deeper into his presence. The Lord is my light and sound. Shall I be afraid? The Lord, the Lord is my life. 
because we are at this place that is set apart to glorify and honor your name, that we may be trained, that we may be uh, taught to live more for you, to love more for you, to be filled more with you and used more by you, Jesus. 
we set aside this time because we desire we desire to surrender more of our life that you would speak more and we would listen more God we just sang so many things we thanked you we declared that this is our God and we spoke of your characteristics and, and Lord we ended by saying you are our Lord you are our King Despite what I feel, I will lead my heart and mind to you are my king. Despite what life circumstances are around me, I will lead myself into worship of, of my heavenly father. God, speak to us. Your presence is here and, and we desire to hear more from you. Thank you for this morning. Keep speaking. Keep helping us to listen. In your name we pray, Lord. Amen. Amen. Good morning. I'm going to tell you guys a story again today, um, and it's a story um, that we're going to be sort of expanding on throughout the rest of uh, of this semester, um, uh, off and on through our, our chapel times together. And, and it's a story that if you've been in church nine times, you've heard this, um, but uh, I, I hear a lot of us sometimes tell it a, a, a little off or maybe miss some points in it. Um, and, and, you know, sometimes when you start a story at the beginning and you start it wrong, uh, you end up with a very different story. Um, it, it ends up not being quite the story that maybe you meant to tell. Uh, where are my Batman fans? So if I tell you we're going to do a new reboot of the Batman movie, and we're going to start it, and I'm like, so let me just give you the pitch. Um, and so opening of the movie, and it starts with this. On the night that Bruce Wayne's parents were almost killed, um, he used his, his force field to prevent them from being killed, and that started his career. And you're like, well, just time out. This might be a really cool superhero story. But that, that ain't Batman. You can't, have a, you can't have a Batman who like didn't have that origin story. It's not the same story. Does that make sense? So let's talk a little bit about um, what's going on in, in Genesis 1 and how we all ended up here. Um, uh, about how this place got built and who we were built to be in it. Um, and so in, uh, uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell a little, I'm not going to read it uh, straight out, but, but uh, I, there's, there's some stuff that I kind of want to highlight on this. Um, and so if you want to follow along in, in Genesis 1 uh, on, your, on your phone or your uh, paper Bible, whatever, that's, that's fine. But uh, Genesis 1 starts with God making stuff, right? It starts with God making stuff. Um, <clears throat> and uh, it's really clear throughout this whole thing that there's like a plan. Does that make sense? It's not just like, he's not like some random kid you know, out in the sandbox with some, some mud going, I don't know what this is going to be, you know, and then who knows what they make. There's a plan for this. Um, he's, he's doing something on purpose, and he has a thing he wants to have happen. Um, so God starts making stuff. And so he starts with light and dark. That's where he starts. He starts with, okay, I'm going to put a light over here, and that's going to run for about, you know, 12 hours or so, and then I'm going to put all the dark over here. That's going to run for about 12 hours or so. So I'm going to make the space day and night. I'm going to make some space for that. That's, that's the first thing I'm going to do. Bang, day one. Does that make sense? Got that? So I made some, some darks over here, lights over here. We've now got some time organized with some structure, and, uh, and that's day one. All right, cool. This is good. I like this. This is good. So that's day one. Day two, then he comes out. He says, all right, I need some space to work. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take this uh, this thing, this vault, I'm going to call it sky, this, this sky, and I'm going to put the, the water and the clouds is up there, and the water that's in the earth is down there, and I'm going to separate into space, and, uh, and, and that's sky. So now the, the light and dark, the day-night thing, has a place to operate. Does that make sense? And that's this space. Cool. Day two, this is good. I like where this is going. This is good. And then, <coughs> day three, 
he comes out and he says, all right, so let's take care of this stuff that's under the sky. So I'm going to put all the water over here, we're going to call that seas. I'm going to put all the land over here, and we're going to call that land. Um, and now i got this space where there's, there's water stuff, there's land stuff, and I've got all that the sky over it, and the, the day-night thing is gone. And so now I've got this space. And then he puts plants in there. He puts plants around in here and, and makes sure there's... And that's an important part of the story here in a second. So he puts plants in there. Um, and, uh, and, and that's it. So now I've got this space with some time that works around, some light, some dark, so there's sort of rhythm here, and I've got this space, and I got this uh, 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 stuff up in the, the, the sky above it, and I've got stuff below it, and then the stuff below it is organized, and now I've got my, my plants in there. All right, about halfway done. And he says, this is good. This is good. And, and look, there's, a, there's a, a process here that is very similar to what happened on this campus over the last couple of weeks. <clears throat> Where are my nesters in here? And here's what I mean by that. Those of you who, before you could go to class, before you could go to practice, before you could go start your semester, you moved into your space, and you had to get your space sorted. You had to get your stuff sorted out. And for some of you, that means, well, my clothes are in a pile, and I have a place to sleep, Good to go. And some of you in here are like, I just gave you super anxiety. Um, you know, and others of you are like, well, as long as I've got most of it unboxed, you're okay. When we moved into our house, and some of you guys were there for this, we moved into our house. I'm a basket case when all my stuff is, some's in the truck, and some's in this trailer, and some's over here. Um, but once it all gets under my roof, I'm like, cool. It, it can stay in boxes as long as it needs to stay, um, and we can sort it out and put stuff away later. And my wife, God bless her, goes, hee! Um, that's, that's, you know, she's a basket case that still rings out of the boxes and on the walls. Where are my nesters in here? Like, you couldn't function until the pictures are up, the lights are up, everybody's organized, all my toys are out, you know, my, my study space is there, um, and, and you guys are like that. That's some of what's happening here. I got my space organized, I got my, my rhythm organized, I got my, my, my water goes over here, my, and, and it, it's all, it's all ready. And then he says, this is good. I like this. I like this. It's good. And then he goes, okay, daytime. What am I going to put in the daytime? I'm going to put a sun in the daytime. That's where I'm going to put. That's where the sun goes, daytime. Nighttime. I'm going to put stars and I'm going to put moon in the nighttime. Now I'm starting to put in that space stuff that goes in that space. Right? So that's ready to go. Now, what's fun about this <clears throat> is some people are going to, at this point in the story, be like, well, no, yeah, actually, how are you going to have light if you don't have the thing that makes the light? <clears throat> My wife loves the Fast and Furious movies. I can't do it. I can't do it because I end up being that guy, the guy I just described. I'm like, physics doesn't work like that. <laughs> you just can't do it. You know, this dude's hold the helicopter with, like, how do you... Ah. And she just looks at me and goes, you are the least fun person in the room right now. That's not what the movies are for. It's a dumb, fun movie. Let Vin Diesel be about family. <coughs> but get this. The problem is, when I'm watching those, I don't want to let the storyteller do what they want to do with the story. And so I get in the way, and I start thinking about all the stuff that doesn't make sense. The point out of this is that right here, God went, where would you put a giant ball of flaming gas in the daytime where it's light? <clears throat> what are you going to do with one of those that's way far away? Nighttime. Or it's dark. So now he's got the stuff that's based on the rhythms in the right place. All right? And then he says, this is, this is good. And then what he does is he comes in and goes, okay, fish uh, in, uh, in the sea and in birds in the sky because that's where they go. So now I've got the things in the place and there's stuff for them to eat and, and I've got them where they need to be. And this is good. And then, and then, and then, now that he's got the right stuff in the right place, he does something different that he hasn't done so far. <clears throat> because every time now, when God has decided, I want there to be a son, he just said, son, 
when he wants there to be, you know, tree, just trees. Uh, I want mountains. Mountains. He just does that, but he does something different. There's an extra step here. Because what God does is he looks at who he is. And I imagine he's got to get a little excited. Because this is, this is the part we've been waiting for. We're building all this stuff for it. And he goes, oh, I'm going to make me a one of these. And he makes us. He makes us. It says he makes humanity in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. He makes us. <coughs> Excuse me. And what, what you need to hear is the subtext of this. It, it is God who came to do all of this for a purpose, for a plan, for a payout. And once he makes us, and then he says, hey, I want you guys to like uh, uh, be fruitful, multiply, fill this place up, and, and, uh, and then, you know, like uh, 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 rule and, and, and subdue it. And a uh, thing about that, I don't like that word subdue. I think that's kind of a, a, a gives the wrong connotation in English. The, uh, another way you might think about that is more like uh, cultivate. So if you're a gardener in here, if you're somebody who likes lawn care, you like work, you go in there, I mowed my lawn yesterday, I, I subdued it. Um, but that didn't mean that I came out there and like beat it into submission. I just made sure that it isn't taking over my neighbor's lawn. You know what I mean? That like th this only goes here and this needs to be about this tall and, and so on and so forth. So it's just, you know, it's make sure this thing's running well. And he puts us in it. And, and that's the thing. I just, I, I just imagine the attitude of this creator, God, going, hey, hey, guess what? Guess what? I made this space for you. See all of this? See this universe? This is where you go. This is where you belong. You were made for this. And I, I have a place to hang out with you. And I have stuff for us to do together. And that's why I did all of this. And then he says, and it's really very good. Not just good. It's very good. Our, our theme this semester is about finding the good that God has for us and in the world around us. And let me tell you something. I want you to get this if you get nothing else right now. It does not matter right now how close you are to God or how far you are from him. It does not matter this morning whether you are running towards him or fleeing away from him. It doesn't matter what good or evil you have done in your life up to this moment. It does not matter the, the color of your skin, your gender, your money background, your accent, your height, your scars, your victories. Regardless of any of that, none of that changes that you were made to be in the image and likeness of God himself. Amen. That is what you were designed for. And you being that image and likeness is very good. Some of you need to hear that. Some of you need to hear that. So, so what? So who cares? Why am I telling you this story? A couple takeaways. First, you were made, the plan, the design, the whole point of the story. Whole point, the, the end of the beginning of this story is you were designed to be in a space with people and with God to do stuff. That's it. How many of you have heard or seen the images that uh, happen a lot in, in modern culture? It has for a long time. Uh, where this image of heaven is like uh, like this sky with clouds and there's little fat babies on clouds with wings and they got like a little three string instrument that doesn't have any tuning uh, ability on it, you know, and that's heaven and, and that's sort of what it looks like. And you hear people talk about it, you know, like, oh, so-and-so got their wings and they're floating around in heaven on a little cloud. And I, look, I'm the ADHD poster child, guys, um, and so... Uh, uh, you know, it, it, that's that's my definition of hell. <clears throat> Floating around with nothing to do on a cloud with an instrument I can't tune. Like, I'm the kid who tears that thing apart and goes, can I make a bow and arrow out of this? Uh, 
go on, do something, you know what I mean? This is not the description that, that God's trying to tell us in this story. It's just, it's just not. Uh, at the end of all this, you've got God talking about a new heaven and a new earth. Let's get back to what my vision was, my dream was in the first place. <clears throat> Look, you were made to be good. You were made to be in a place with people and with God. Some of you suffer with, uh, with uh, when you do something wrong, you, you, you feel like, hey, listen, I, I broke a rule, right? I let somebody down, or I said something hurtful, and you feel guilt about that because you go, oh, man, I, I, I did this thing that was bad, and you go to the person and go, hey, I shouldn't have said that to you, and, and, and I, I'm really sorry that I did that thing, and then hopefully they go, yeah, hey, I forgive you, and maybe there's some things we could do different in the future, and that you feel that guilt and that, that motivates you in that way, but some of you, when something bad happens, when you make a poor decision, or when you fail to live up to your standard or the standards of the people around you, standard of the image of God that you are called to bear, when that happens, instead of going, I did this thing, you go, I am this thing. I didn't say a bad thing. I'm a bad person. I didn't say a mean thing. I am mean. I, I, didn't, I didn't act out in anger. I am anger. It's what I am. And I am telling you, at the core of this story, that is not the truth yeah. about what you were made to be. You are made to be the image of God. That's the first so what out of this. But here's the second. The second is, spoiler alert, we broke it. We broke it. A shattered mirror still reflects, but it doesn't do a good job. We broke it. Todd's going to talk more about that part of the story uh, uh, next week. Um, so sorry if I gave away the trick ending there, but we broke it. It's, it's the world as we find it, and ourselves as image bearers are not as we were designed to be. But see, that's the beauty of the gospel. That's the core of the gospel. That's the power of the gospel. That's where the gospel story is heading. God has not changed. The dream he had when he started the story is still there, and it's not a vain dream. It's still there. He is still saying, look at all of this. Look at the world around you. Look at the depths of the ocean and the beauties there. Look at the majesty of the mountains. Look at the greatness uh, of the seas. Look at, look at what the, the Webb telescope is showing us about the vast universe that we inhabit. <clears throat> and God says, all of this. Designed us to be where you fit together with me. And Jesus says as much in John 14. I'm go my father's house has a lot of room. And I'm going to prepare a place for you in them. That's what I'm going to do. If that wasn't true, I would have told you. And you know the way to get there. Well, I'm not a minute. <clears throat> Guys, this whole thing is God. This whole pursuit of God is not primarily about rules. Rules are important, but that's not primarily about rules. It's not about defeating some bad guy, although there are bad guys that need to be defeated, but, but, but it's not primarily about that. It's not primarily about being nice to people, although it's really good to be nice to people. It's about getting back to the point. Let's live together in a place made just for you and the others that God is calling together to be with him and do stuff. <clears throat> You see, if that's the heart of the gospel story, God wants to be with you, and that changes so much about the God I'm pursuing. Rather than a God that just wants to fix all the broken rules. So here's the invitation. I'm going to ask everyone in here, take this semester and figure out where are you in the process of getting back to God's plan A. Because here's the deal. You can't do it on your own. You can't make your own way back. You can't find the image that God gave to you by just deciding you know what it is. One of the things you'll learn really quickly uh, in studying God is that God has an attitude problem, and it's a big one. He thinks he's God, and he expects to be treated as such. And so when I go to him and he says, this is the way you get back to me, and I go, hey, I don't think that's going to work for me. And he's like, I designed all of this. I know how to get you back. Trust me. I know what I'm doing. Where are you in this process? If you are already a Christ follower, and you're looking forward to this new heaven and new earth, this return, remember, 
that everyone you meet today, everyone you meet tomorrow, everyone you meet this week is someone God wants to reflect his image. God designed them to be in his image, whether they are doing a good job of reflecting that right now or not. He made them to be good, to be very good when they are in that right place with him. And so because of that, if you're a Christ follower in here, be a good reflection of him. Because see, God's, let, let God's spirit empower the, the word of God as it, as, it, as it comes into your life and lives out so that you look, act, walk, talk like Jesus. Because in that same place, Jesus says, uh, in, in John, Jesus says, uh, you know how to get to this house. You know how to get to this place. You know how to get to that spot. And his disciples are like, I don't think we do. And Jesus says, if you see me, you've seen God. If you see me, you've seen the reflection of God. Christ followers, live your lives in such a way today, right now, today, in such a way that when people see you, they see the image of Christ in you. And through that, they see the unbroken image and likeness of God himself. Seek that. If you are not a Christ follower in here, hear this. At the beginning, this is what we were designed for. And you are being invited to come back to that. There are a lot of other details about that whole process and what it looks like and a lot of changes and transformation. But that's the core. A God who says, I want you and I made you to be in that relationship with me. And stuff has messed that up. Let's come back home. If you are feeling that, don't leave this room, don't leave this space this morning without talking to somebody that you know is reflecting Christ well. Don't, don't, don't leave without having that conversation that says, what do I do next? Is this really about me? Am I really, am I really somebody who can be made in the image of God? Is that true? Don't leave without that. <clears throat> in just a moment, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you uh, to pray with me. And I want you to consider this story, the truth of this story, and the power of this story, and the fact that you and everyone you know was designed originally to be in the image and likeness of a very good God. Now with me, please. God, we love you. And again, we want you to hear that. God, I thank you. I thank you that when you made us, you looked at yourself, you were inspired. And that set us on a trajectory to be so treasured and so loved. God, I thank you for those in here who have recognized this, who have seen this, and who, who have come to you and asked to be a part of, uh, of your kingdom and what you're doing. God, for those who have not, who are, are still trying to figure out what this story is all about, um, uh, I pray that you would motivate them to, to, to find your son, Jesus. See you in that, in that life, in that person and come to them to be brought home. And Father, for those of us in here who are trying to do it, but we feel like we're failing, um, who know that we need to make some course corrections, those of us in here who feel like um, if, if, we could just, if we could just take a step um, and let go of some things or pick up some things that we need to add to our life, um, I pray that you would empower your spirit and empower the people in this room through your spirit to help them take the next right step. God, we pray all of this in your name. We pray it in the name of your son, Jesus, who is alive right now today. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Got a couple of announcements. Um, and so I would like to uh, invite to the stage uh, Susie. Um, and I've got lights in my eyes, so there we go. Go ahead. Um, and so there you go. <laughs> all right, I'm going to say it wrong again, all right? Um, Susie Finkbeiner. I did it right. Yes, all right, perfect. Thank you. Um, JLCC alum um, and uh, uh, published author, um, tonight we're having uh, a, a, a book launch party, um, 6.30, um, right, uh, right here um, in this space. So I encourage you guys to come out. Um, and check this out. Um, she's going to be available in the lobby immediately after this uh, to, uh, uh, to talk to any of you that want to, so come and, and show her some, uh, some love out there. I've got two questions for you. Um, the, the first is this. Um, 
Uh, give us uh, really quick, like the 30 second uh, uh, trailer for your new book. Okay, so. <coughs> Hello. Oh, okay, there. Um, the All American is set in 1952 in the Detroit area, and it is a story about two sisters. Can you grab the other mic? Sure. On the music stand? Okay, so it's set in 1952 in the Detroit area. Two sisters, Bertha and Flossie. Bertha is 16 years old and Flossie is 11. And it is a story about big dreams and big adversity and how to overcome such things. And also there's baseball in it. So women's baseball. There we go. All right, uh, last thing. What, uh, what 30 second encouragement would you give to any of the creatives that we have in the room? So if you are a creative person, which I happen to believe you all are because you reflect the image of a creative God, um, find out what it is that you can, can do to foster that creativity. What is it that you find yourself delighting in? and finding yourself worshiping God while doing, if that's music, if that's math, then maybe you need to teach me something. I don't understand math, but um, there are so many ways to be creative. And, and I would say, learn how to use creativity as play. Because right now you have a lot of pressures and you will as the semester goes on and creativity can help alleviate that. Excellent, thank you. She'll be out in the lobby. Um, so, uh, come out and, uh, and join us here in this space. A couple quick announcements. Um, uh, the uh, GLCC text alerts. <coughs> Should have that, that number up. Um, so, uh, and there's, uh, there'll be some slides out there. There we go. This is the number. If you text join to that number, you will automatically be added to the text alerts. This is how we're going to deal with uh, any emergency situations that or really important information that we need to get out quickly. Um, <coughs> there we go. All right. Um, also, uh, uh, you might put it in your phone as GLCC text alert, so when it pops up, you're not, you know, seeing this uh, unknown number and go, "Who is this person that's trying to spam me?" Um, we will not spam you. Um, uh, so uh, feel free to do that. That will also that number will also be up on some of the screens, the announcement screens around campus, uh, so you can stand and stare at the TV and wait for that slide to come back around. Um, uh, while you guys are doing that, chapel groups are still running. If you have not signed up for one, you need to do so quickly um, so we can get those keep those going. Uh, Friday, September fifteenth, uh, in the Doty, there's going to be uh, a blood drive. Uh, get with Greg uh, if you want to volunteer for that. Come out and donate. Um, also, I think we're still looking for homemade cookies, so um, uh, that is the thing. Um, crew applications, uh, you need to get with Miranda or Kristen or uh, Grace uh, to get crew applications. If you're interested, the, the Great Lakes Christian College crew is a group of student leaders that are helping us to create community, um, spiritual growth, and, uh, and service on our campus, so find out uh, how that works. Um, uh, Armada Geddon is coming, but the date has changed. Um, it's going to be a little later this year um, due to some unforeseen circumstances. Uh, the 29th and 30th of September, so put it on your, your calendar. Uh, more about that will be coming uh, as, uh, as that gets a little bit closer to time. <clears throat> also, on, um, on the 11th of next month, uh, men, there's, a, uh, there's a, a, a men's rally at Lake James. Um, we'll be leaving campus at 3.30, uh, probably be back about 10.30. Um, uh, Billy's a great speaker, um, good opportunity to come and, uh, and get some encouragement as men. Um, at, and uh, it's, it's not highlighted up there, but uh, there's also steak, so free steak. So um, uh, that's, that's, come see Billy, but there's also free steak. <laughs> um, and so I think that's all my announcements. Is there anything else that I've missed, Andy? All right. Um, 
Uh, bow with me real quick. Father God, help us to go out into the world and be good image bearers of you. Let those who see us see you and therefore know that you are a God that loves them very much and are inviting them home. We pray all of this in your name. Again, the name of your son Jesus is alive today. Amen and amen. And you are dismissed. <laughs> Good job following when there's no order. <laughs> you did awesome. And you did.